these are all the topics that we study in these wave guides so let us start with the introduction of the microwave wave guides so uh, why we actually go for these uh, microwave wave guides the reason is uh, basically wave guides and all like uh, coaxial cable and uh, other all will be coming under transmission lines so the purpose of transmission line is transmitting the electromagnetic waves from one place to another place so generally the place where we transmit is the source and the place we transmit it to will be the destination or load so for transmitting these electromagnetic waves from one place to another place we generally go for so many different types like uh, two conductor transmission lines coaxial cables optical fibers okay in that waveguides is also one among it so the reason why we come to this waveguides is the two conductor transmission lines and coaxial cables are the low frequency transmission lines that means maximum we can transmit only up to some hundreds of megahertz of frequencies so if we try to transmit the frequency more than gigahertz which is 10 power 9 hertz to hundreds of gigahertz these two conductor and coaxial cables will give us different kinds of losses that we will generally study in microwave engineering so what are the uh, different types of uh, losses or uh, problems that we come across when we try to uh, transmit or uh, use uh, high frequencies through conventional tubes so because we are getting these uh, different types of uh, losses okay uh, when we try to use higher frequencies uh, so they will give different types of losses so that's the reason we go for a waveguide a, a transmission line which we call it waveguide and the higher frequency signals here we call them as microwaves so let's first uh, start with uh, the definition of microwaves and the frequencies of the microwaves so microwaves are the electromagnetic waves whose frequencies range from 1 gigahertz to several hundreds of gigahertz and I have written here as 1000 gigahertz but in some textbooks they'll write it as only up to 300 gigahertz microwaves are so called since they are defined in terms of their wavelength in the sense that micro refers to tininess so it means as the frequency increases the wavelength is going to reduce because frequency and wavelength are always inversely proportional with each other so that's the reason as the frequency is going up to thousands of uh, gigahertz the wavelength is going to become very very small so for microwaves the wavelength is very tiny so that micro here refers to tininess now let's come to the definition of waveguide at high at frequencies higher than 3 gigahertz and some hundreds of gigahertz the transmission of electromagnetic waves along the transmission lines and cables become very difficult as I mentioned mainly due to the losses that occur both in the solid dielectric needed to support the conductor and in conductor themselves this is what the problem that we face in a two conductor transmission lines for that purpose we go for a metallic tube which can be used to transmit the electromagnetic waves at these higher frequencies and that metallic tube which we call it which we call it a waveguide so now let us try to define the definition of a waveguide a waveguide is basically a hollow metallic tube of uniform cross section for transmitting the electromagnetic waves by successive reflections from the inner walls of the tube so a waveguide is a hollow metallic tube it is like a matchbox in which the 
match sticks will be removed so it will be just having four walls and it is inside completely hollow so that will be having one top surface and one bottom surface right side and left side inside it is completely filled in its inside it is completely empty so that kind of hollow metallic tube of uniform cross section for transmitting the electromagnetic waves by successive reflections from the inner walls of the tube what is the meaning of successive reflections here so here once the wave enters into a wave guide from one end so it will touch the top wall and will immediately reflect it back to the bottom wall and it will go till the other end by making total internal reflections just like the total internal reflection will be happening in the optical fiber so this is what is the definition of a wave guide so basically this wave guide is made up of a metal called copper and some alloys also will be added into it so these wave guides are basically used in uhf and microwave regions as an alternative to transmission lines so uhf means ultra high frequencies which are generally in the range of 30 megahertz to 300 megahertz and why this microwave walls inside walls are generally coated with either silver or arm the reason is the induced currents in the walls of the induced currents in the walls of the waveguide give rise to some power losses and to minimize these power losses the waveguide wall resistance must be made as low as possible F to reduce that resistance uh, inside the walls generally we code that waveguide with either silver or arm arm means gold that will not only reduce the resistance it will also improve the conductivity and minimize the losses so waveguide is as i said usually manufactured by using a copper using copper material and inside the waveguide generally it is air filled air filled means it is completely free space now let us try to see the comparison of waveguides with a two conductor or two wire transmission lines so first we'll try to see the similarities first we'll try to see the similarities so let us try to see the similarities of these transmission lines with the waveguides okay let us see that first one first one a wave traveling in a waveguide has a phase velocity and will be attenuated as in a transmission line so it means in a transmission line generally when a wave is propagating through it its uh, amplitude will be obviously going to reduce and the phase velocity is also going to change so when a wave is traveling in a waveguide will have some phase velocity and will be attenuated as as just like a wave will be attenuating in a transmission line so that's the reason it is called similarity so when a wave reaches when a wave reaches at the end of a waveguide at the end of a waveguide it is reflected unless the load impedance is adjusted to absorb the wave so generally as we see in a transmission line if the end of the transmission line that is load zl or zr is not equal to characteristic impedance the wave will be reflected back if the load is connected with an impedance equal to characteristic impedance the wave will be absorbed so here also so when the wave reaches at the end of the waveguide if it is not matched with the source load obviously the wave will be reflected back otherwise it will be absorbed that's what is a similarity and another similarity that we are going to see is any irregularity in the waveguide produces reflection just like an irregularity in a transmission line this is what i said already if the load impedance is not equal to characteristic impedance in a transmission line the wave will be reflected just like the same thing will happen in a waveguide also next similarity is the reflected wave can be eliminated by proper impedance matching as in a transmission line so in a transmission lens we have seen several types of uh, matching techniques just like uh, 
uh, impedance transformers, uh, stub matching, single stub matching, double stub matching. Just like in waveguides also we have several impedance matching techniques like irises, screws, okay, which we'll generally study in microwave, wave, microwave engineering. And another similarity that we generally see in waveguide is when both incident and reflected waves are present in a waveguide, a standing wave results as in a transmission line. So when a impedant forward wave and reflected wave both are in phase with each other, they get combined and that they result in a standing wave. So in a waveguide also, a standing wave will be resulted. Next, let us see the dissimilarities. Means the differences between a two-conductor transmission line and a waveguide. So the first and main difference that we see here is there is a cutoff value for the frequency of transmission depending upon the dimension and shape of the waveguide. Only waves having frequencies greater than that cutoff frequency FC will be propagated hence the waveguide acts like a high pass filter and FC there is the cutoff frequency. In a two conductor transmission line all the waves will be propagated through that. That's what we are going to see next. We will calculate the cutoff frequency FC in terms of A and B where A is the width of the waveguide and B is the breadth of the waveguide. So above that particular cutoff frequency only the waves will be propagated inside a waveguide and second dissimilarity is the waveguide is a one conductor transmission system the whole body of the waveguide acts as a ground and the wave propagates through multiple reflections from the walls of the waveguide but this will not happen in a transmission line the velocity of the the velocity of the propagation of the wave inside the waveguide is quite different from that of the free space. Okay, so this is another difference. The velocity of the propagation of the waves inside a waveguide is quite different. Because of the reflections which will be taking place, the velocity will always be changing inside a waveguide. And Another difference that we generally see is in a waveguide, we define what is called wave impedance, which is analogous to the characteristic imp impedance of a transmission line. Of course, this is a similarity. We cannot consider it as a difference. And another difference is the system of transmission in a waveguide is in accordance with the field theory while that in a transmission line is it is in accordance with the circuit theory because in transmission line we find out its equations in terms of voltage and current but here in waveguide we always find out the solutions for E and H that is another difference or sim dissimilarity between a transmission line two conductor transmission line and uh, a waveguide and the last but a very important uh, dissimilarity or difference uh, between a waveguide and two conductor is if one end of the waveguide is closed using a shorting plate there will be reflections and hence standing wave will be formed if the other end is also closed that means if both the ends of a waveguide is shorted with a shorting plate that will act like a cavity resonator because resonance will be taking place uh, inside that waveguide if both the ends of the uh, waveguide is shorted so it simply behaves like a cavity resonator okay so these are the similarities and dissimilarities between between the two conductor transmission line and uh, a waveguide